Hello, um, I'm Lina and Rail is coming soon. We have uh, uh, divided our presentation into two. So. And the aim of our study was then to in investigate what kind of impact, if any, probably, uh, do learner errors have on uh, automatic uh, part of speech tagging. So I am going to give you uh, some theoretical background and introduce you to the mat mat materials and methods, and really then later uh, introduces you to our results. So, and the study is then uh, based on the corp uh, learner English corpus that is being currently compiled uh, at our Department of English Studies of, uh, of the University of Tartu. So, uh, firstly, a uh, learner language, uh, also known as inter language, uh, is then uh, uh, a foreign language system uh, that uh, a learner is uh, putting together while learning a uh, foreign language, a language that is uh, uh, not an official language of their country, uh, country of origin. And it represents a linguistic system uh, uh, that the learner is constructing uh, based on the input of his foreign language. And the nature of uh, learner language is dynamic and uh, variable as it reflects this process of putting this uh, uh, linguistic structure together in, uh, in, in the learner's brain. So, uh, learner corpora in Estonia, to our knowledge, uh, there are not very many of them. So mostly in Estonia, we uh, obviously we put together um, uh, learner corpora of, uh, of the Estonian language, but we also know that uh, our university is also a uh, learner Spanish uh, corpus, not uh, a huge one, but a small one. And now, uh, this kind of unofficial, I do not know, can we call it unofficial uh, learner English uh, uh, corpus at our department, all, all, uh, although we introduced this corpus already in 2017, uh, the same, same series of uh, conferences. So, uh, and this means that the learner corpus uh, research is also uh, in uh, its infancy in Estonia. So, really, and I uh, evaluated uh, this um, uh, post-tagging, automatic post-tagging uh, process uh, last year. And then Janne Klavan has uh, an article in print and also uh, 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 at this conference there's supposed to be one poster uh, presentation by one of our doctoral students at our department on the sa uh, same topic, learner English then. So let's move on to part of speech tagging and then a few words about clause 7 automatic tagging system. So we probably all know what corpus uh, annotation does. Uh, it uh, means adding linguistic data to a corpus. Uh, it uh, may be a part of speech tagging or syntactic, uh, semantic or a discourse annotation. And this enables then uh, extracting information uh, that would otherwise be very difficult to uh, obtain from the corpus. So automatic uh, part of speech tagging uh, uh, means assigning a tag to each word in the corpus by splitting the text into tokens, finding possible tags and uh, disambiguating them using con contextual and statistical information. Uh, the clause automatic post-tagging system uses statistical calculations to assign uh, part of speech to words. So it has an accuracy rate of uh, 
65 to uh, 98 percent uh, when it acts uh, native English texts. Um, the uh, clause 7 uses a lexicon of uh, 20,000 words, a suffix list that includes the most frequent word endings and they associated tags, an idioms list that accounts for multi-word units whose syntactic role in the sentence may differ from, uh, uh, from their constituent parts, and a probability function to help the tagger choose the most appropriate tag. So, as I mentioned, uh, the clause 7 uh, has an uh, accuracy rate of 85 to 98 uh, percent when it attacks uh, uh, native English. Uh, so, the clause 7 has been trained on native English texts. So, obviously, we are going to encounter several problems when we try to tag learner uh, learner English with, uh, with uh, clause 7. So we might then face three issues. Mm, uh, firstly, uh, learner English has many unknown forms that Vitagar has not met before. And these unknown uh, forms or words usually uh, result from spelling or grammatical errors that learners do. Then uh, the learner language might have different part of speech distributions. For example, uh, the word concrete uh, in, uh, uh, in newspaper texts, it's typically a noun, and newspaper texts are then uh, texts that are used to train uh, taggers. Uh, but in uh, uh, academic learner English, uh, concentrate is usually a verb, so. And then we also might have uh, uh, part, of speech sequ uh, part of speech sequences that are characteristic to learner language. Uh, for example, uh, learners tend to overuse certain parts of speech and they tend to underuse patterns with prepositions or, or sentence initial nouns. And these uh, uh, issues also might pose problems to automatic taggers. So, mm, last year, uh, we, uh, Rayleigh and I, we tested clause 7, um, automatic post-tagging system, uh, and its ability to tag the Estonian learner English. And for that, we compared the manually and automatically tagged samples of, uh, of our little corpus. Uh, then we identified errors in uh, tag assignment. And uh, we explored the po uh, possible reasons for these errors. Uh, so our study then showed that the tagger had difficulty tagging determiners, adverbs, general adverbs, and singular common nouns. Interestingly, it also struggled uh, when it tried to differentiate between nouns and adjectives, as well as uh, conjunctions and adverbs. And additionally, the uh, clause 7 system does not have a separate tag for, for uh, relative pronouns, uh, which may uh, uh, make it challenging to study uh, relative clause constructions uh, in Estonian learner English. Uh, but despite these issues, we found that the error rate was uh, still pretty low, uh, only 4.01%. Uh, So now I would like you uh, to introduce the earlier uh, research on the topic, uh, which was then the impact of learner errors on automatic uh, part of speech tagging. So researchers uh, categorize errors in text produced by language learners into two main categories, spelling errors and language errors. Uh, spelling errors uh, result from uh, keyboarding errors, so basically typos. Uh, then uh, there are spacing errors and uh, capitalization errors. 
And language errors involve the learner's morphological, uh, syntactic, and lexical mistakes. And lan le uh, language errors are more uh, diverse uh, across different studies, as when nature depends on the first language of, of uh, learners. Uh, so part of speech checking errors can occur uh, due to unknown are also known, uh, known words, uh, which then include uh, foreign words and uh, those not present in the Tagore's lexicons. Uh, probably due to differences in the research designs, and then I started thinking that probably also because the first language of uh, uh, language learners uh, these research, uh, researchers have reached uh, two different conclusions. So some of them have found that spelling errors have a major impact on the automatic part of speech tagging systems. And others have found that no, spelling mistakes are okay, language mistakes are really, really bad when you try to automatically tag your uh, uh, corpus. So that was interesting to find. So, the materials and me method, what we did with which material. So, the study is then based on the TART to Corpus of Estonian Learner English, and uh, it has a nice name, it's called Tsele. And this is a collection of short essays written by candidates as part of our uh, entrance examination uh, for the BA program in, uh, in English language and literature. So the essays are timed, which means that uh, students or candidates do not have an uh, unlimited amount of time uh, putting their essays together. And we assume that these essays are at uh, B2 level. And they are modeled on a short journalistic text and they typically range from 250 to 300 words. And only the most competent candidates who pass a uh, general lexicrammatical test, they uh, progress to the essay stage. So for this study, we uh, adopted the definition of error by uh, Ellis, 1994, uh, which describes uh, error as a devi deviation of the norms of the target language. And the target language uh, we considered this time to be both British and American English, because this is something that uh, is uh, taught at schools, either British English or American English, uh, the uh, students uh, meet this the most when they uh, uh, scroll social media. Uh, so these are the two varieties that, are the most, uh, that our learners are the most familiar with. And the study then examined the overt errors and their potential impact on the performance of, of the tagger. So we followed several analytical steps to investigate the relationship between learner errors and uh, tagger errors in Taylor. So firstly, we automatically part of speech target, uh, target a sample of approximately 25,000 words or 92 essays. Uh, we used the clause seven. Uh, then we chose randomly 10 essays, which is approximately 2,500 words. And the first step, we manually, uh, part of speech, tagged this sample. Uh, then we identified learner errors in the smaller sample, 2,500 words. Then uh, we created an error taxonomy, uh, which was then based on the previous research and we also classified errors into two groups, uh, spelling errors and language errors. Uh, then we collated and compared the error tagged sample with a part of speech tagged sample to determine correlations between learner errors and tagger errors. And finally, 
We identified specific learner errors, uh, error taxons that correlated with a notable increase in the dagger error rate. And finally, we formulated hypotheses about the possible impact of learner errors on dagger errors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll continue and uh, talk about the results. So, based on the previous research, we uh, created a learner error taxonomy. So, as Lynn already said, we had two types uh, spelling errors and language errors, as in previous literature as well. But of course, these two categories had subcategories as well. So, when we talk about spelling errors, we, there was adding or leaving out the iPhone or creating um, non words or having spelling errors that created real words but uh, incorrect in this particular context um, they were used and then spacing errors meaning that uh, the space was left out or there was an extra space and capitalization errors that were for instance in english you do not have a capital letter but or you have a capital letter and that has an importance uh, for meaning as well and another category we added was that of compound spelling error where you had two types of errors uh, together and so we uh, had uh, problems assigning them uh, this particular error in one of the um, above categories. And on the slide, you have some examples of these types here as well. Uh, as to uh, language errors, again, there were several um, subcategories. So first, uh, the verbal system, we had um, verbs, grammatical categories that involved wrong use of tense, mood, voice. Uh, then verb pattern errors when you had uh, different um, subcategorization frameworks wrongly used. So instead of using, for instance, infinitives, participles were used. Then as to the nominal system, many problems there were with uh, genitive construction. Then as to noun phrase errors, we had plurality, countable, uncountable nouns, then quantify errors. Uh, of course, they are related to the noun, but we classified them as a separate one. And then article errors, so um, missing an article or using a wrong article or um, using an extra article where you shouldn't use an article at all. Then pronoun errors, so wrong uh, pronoun was used, an extra pronoun was used or uh, pronoun was left out altogether. And adjective and adverb errors, so using uh, a wrong uh, uh, word class there. Then um, prepositional errors, a wrong preposition was used or an extra preposition was used or preposition was left out altogether. The same applies to conjunctions, so the wrong one was used or it was uh, left out altogether. And then sentence structure errors when word order was wrong or um, there were fragments used or objects or subjects were left out. We categorize these types of errors as a separate subcategory. Then derivation errors, uh, wrong uh, word forms were used uh, or uh, Lexical choice errors uh, included uh, collocation errors or um, idiomatic constructions were uh, idiomatic in uh, native language. And then a uh, separate category for errors that uh, we uh, found difficult to assign to any of the above categories. So uh, these were the error types we had and analyzing the sample we had, we came up with these figures. So there were um, uh, 560 language errors and 118 spelling errors, so in total 678 errors. 
So when talking about the learn errors and uh, what was the uh, effect of these errors on tagging, so uh, the percentage of language errors that caused the, the tagger to assign a wrong uh, tag was relatively low, so 2.8% only, so 38 out of 560. As the spelling errors, every fifth such error resulted in a word that was wrongly tagged. So, and um, just uh, quickly uh, comment uh, as. I was so shown that no time. Uh, so uh, taking errors uh, that created a, um, a word that was uh, in a language was not considered a um, um, tagging error, so learn error. As to these different categories, uh, when we look at language errors and uh, which caused more errors than sentence structure and use of articles and prepositions, but at the same time, often the tagger was able to assign a correct tag there. As the spelling errors, here non words and omitted hyphens were the highest, but it seems to be hyphens caused more errors than creation of non words. For instance, uh, if you look at uh, literature that was written in the wrong way, uh, the tagger was uh, able to guess the result. And then also merge errors uh, caused um, problems for the tag as well. There were only six of them, but 33% uh, of them caused in tagging errors. And conclusion. Uh, so uh, um, the decision or the conclusion what we can uh, draw from this small scale study is that if we were to uh, correct the learner errors, then of course that would increase the tagging accuracy of the clause automatic um, tagging system. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Should I give it to you? <laughs> so, uh, so please, uh, do we have any questions from the auditory or online? This no questions online. Misleading. Mm -hmm. Well. Yes, Detmar, please. Sure, thanks a lot. Um, what I'm curious about is you started by talking about interlanguage, um, which is, as you defined it, um, defined by systematic nature. But then you focused on um, what learners do as erroneous and labeled it more like a teacher would. Have you considered uh, that there may be um, characteristics of the systematicity you could take into account, for example, we found when we look at uh, Spanish learners of English, he was choiced for the job, uh, then choiced is not accidentally an error, but what they're doing is they're attaching past tense ed to something which is distributionally would be verb, but actually lemma-wise is noun. Uh, so uh, we therefore concluded that we need to, for part of speech, separate the sources of evidence, morphological evidence, distributional evidence, lemma evidence, and then um, we try to push that in a sense towards more systematic annotation of what it is, interlanguage, rather than as viewing learner language as a deficient form of native language. So have you considered you know, uh, that kind of um, viewing learner language in its own right, rather than as a deficient form of native language? Um. It's a very good point, and I think uh, this is a good thing to continue. So at, at this point, we try to sort of see what clause does, and if we take this into account and look at the errors and see the systematicity there, then maybe we could sort of analyze our system more. But uh, at this point, we have not uh, done this kind of analysis yet. But it's a good point to keep in mind, or you want to. That's something. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah, Krista. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was quite interested in, in uh, when you're measuring the uh, effect of the uh, well um, differences in learner language uh, to the uh, tagger, but you pick just one of the taggers. Uh, I imagine that based on what is the main principle between the uh, part of speech tagger, then uh, differences, it, they would have different effects, for example, if it's a neural tagger or a statistical one. So are you planning, uh, why did you choose the close one, and are you planning to uh, also compare the results of different taggers? Yes. 
Good question. Oh, you don't have this one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, our main uh, aim was to find a tagger that does its job. Um, we just want to tag our corpus. We do not want to uh, compare what taggers do. And we know that clause is free. <laughs> this is a, a, one of very important aspects of our choice. So I think that uh, I personally would leave that issue uh, for younger generation. <gasps> it's, a, it's the end of our presentation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we, we don't have to worry about this.